We're live. Are we live? Oh, we're live. We're live. Hello. Is that start the video? Hi there. Hi yeah, there. start it. Oh, how awful. Well, how do you make it not do that? I want to unmute this one and read that one. Let's find out. <laughs> this isn't going well. No, let's just start. <laughs> What's happening? Why does this work sometimes and sometimes not? Yeah, and then we got 11 viewers. Can you viewers let us know if you can hear the video playing? Yeah, can you hear us or the video? Or the video. It's going really well. Yeah, tell us. We're really good at technology. <laughs> Better than Angie. Better than Angie. <laughs> you know. Hello, everyone. Hello. We got viewers. We got 12 viewers, and none of you are going to respond to us? They said, shut up. We're watching the video. <laughs> Not the oh video. my god. All right. All right. She they hear us, not the video. Why? Why? The video is the important part. The video we can jabber on forever. All right, let's not the video. Oh let's my gosh. It's such forever. a cute video though. I know. It's it's just not happening. Is it not happening? Are we giving up? We can hear you, not the video. Oh wow. Well. well, we're so much better than the video. It's a really cute video. Okay, so let me I'll tell the story of yes, the video. Yes, 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 yes. So this is um one of our one of the the dogs that has been helped. She had um allergies as well as really severe separation anxiety. And the allergy control actually happened kind of as a side effect of using it for her anxiety. Um, this dog had had kind of during its fear period, um, when it was a, a puppy transferred homes, lost the the other dog that was in the household and was constantly surrounded by noise and construction. So freaked out, developed long-term anxiety. And so their owner um, started using CBD to kind of curb that anxiety and slowly train it out of them. And at the same time, started seeing a reduction in the allergies that they were having. Um, so it, that was a really... It happened so many times with like when uh, Angie first started to use CBD on the farm, Nina as a uh, severe thunderstorm anxiety, her Doberman. Yeah. Um, she also had this like fatty tumor on her eye. And so she was giving her CBD every day to right. chill out her anxiety. Yeah, yeah. And slowly she realized that the tumor starts to shrink. Right, There's right. So many times we get calls from pet parents being like, I started for one thing and it helped that. And I had no idea it was gonna help yeah. something else. And that's always the coolest. Yeah. Always the coolest. Yeah, so many, so many secondary effects, so many things that are interconnected that when you start balancing the whole system, things that you didn't even realize were problems start yeah. actually showing up and, and getting better. Let's um, say some hellos to some people who are here. Hi, everybody. Uh, Melissa. Hello, hey, Melissa. Kathleen. Hi, Susan. Hello, Susan. Hello, hello Angel. Hello, Amy. Amy Brown. Angel. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Yeah. We're coming to you from New York City. New York today. City. Uh, a lot of you guys don't know this, but this is actually where Carter and I usually live. Yeah, most um, of the time. We went down, well, I, I'm, we're both in Tampa quite often to help with the rescue farm um, and to be with CBD Dog Health, that's where the business station. Um, but we went down there when COVID started, thinking we'd be down there for about a month. Last March, packed my bag for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, a year later, yeah, we were still there. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's been a while. So we come back, uh, well, <clears throat> this is your first trip back in a year. Um, mm -hmm. So my first trip back in about six months. Um, we'll both be coming back permanently here soon. So yeah. we're still kind of getting our bearings together and, and figuring out this this new world in New York City. And yeah. Um, but we'll yeah. be here every Friday, no matter where we are. No matter where. One of us, two of us will be here. Susan, you you're so welcome to come work on the rescue farm. There's, yes. there's always more work to be done. <laughs> so come on down. Oh, we got yes. we got pigs, we got geese, we got dogs, we got rabbits. Oh and we got a lot chickens, of old dogs that old need dogs. help. Lots so, of old dogs that need, and love and pets. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. And, and, and allergies. And, and allergies. Mm -hmm. One of the allergies, this, this statement took me out so hard when I found out that allergies is one of the top, if not number one, reason that pets are euthanized every year. Right. Allergies. We're yeah. putting down pets because of 
allergies. And the lengths that pet parents go to to curb their pet's allergies are so dramatic and oh. often are, you know, you trade allergies for like a complete loss of quality of life and then a whole bunch of other really awful diseases depending on what you're using to treat it. Yeah. Um, but there we are here today to share another way. Woohoo! So. Ways to help the symptoms, but also to help the root cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some tips to help you guys um, look throughout your house and see things that you can maybe change. Um, at CBD Dog Health, we are always about not just telling you this is the cure for everything. No, we want to find the root cause of the problem. Um, food, yeah. environment stuff, and then supplement it with things like CBD. Yes, um, we're all about a holistic approach. Yeah. And what holistic means is that you are approaching it from every angle. You're considering their condition, their their history, their environment, their energetic balance. It's everything, not yeah. just one problem with one solution. Yeah. You gotta look at the whole animal, the whole being. Exactly, exactly. And everything, well, I say this every week, everything that we say applies to us as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, my my lifestyle, the way I eat, the supplements I take, the medications I decide to not take have changed dramatically since I started CB Dog Health because I've seen the difference in dogs. Yeah. I've seen the difference what happens when we stop certain medications that suppress the immune system. I see the difference when we start feeding them the right things. Yeah. And how drastic of a change it is. Mm -hmm. And I start thinking, well, our bodies aren't as different as theirs as we think. And no, as soon as no. I start making these changes, everything clears up. Yeah. Um, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So cool. what are allergies? We have a definition here. So allergies, this kind of el elucidated it all for me just so that I could understand it better. Um, allergies are the symptoms that arise because of a disproportionate response by the immune system to something that's not innately dangerous to our pets. So the body sees something and the point of our, of an allergic response is to get rid of things in the body that can be potentially harmful to foreign the body. invaders, foreign invaders, things that are in the body that can cause harm. So toxins, um, different viruses, bacteria. And so what it does is it creates this inflammatory response that rushes oxygen and blood flow to the, that site so that more white blood cells, T cells, B cells, those things that are meant to fight off those foreign invaders can get to the site and, and get them gone. Releasing enzymes like histamines mm -hmm. and, um, to, to help fight everything off, thinking that there's this foreign invader that's mm -hmm. going to hurt us. And, and sometimes our bodies and dogs' bodies just get confused right. with common allergens. Yeah, those defenses get tripped by something that's actually not bad for them by itself. You know, there's nothing innately dangerous about dander, grass, even different dietary allergens. Well, sometimes it's dangerous. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, um, just a, a common allergen. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, before we get into how CBD is going to help, um, one thing that Angie opened my world to is things that I put in my house and the, the fragrances I'm using, yep. how much that affects the, our pets and us that yeah. I didn't really think about. We have to remember that our dogs are so low to the ground right. that all these chemicals we're putting on the floor to clean, you know, they're right there and they're, they're, they're getting it in their system. Uh, mm -hmm. It's causing not just um, al allergy problems, but a slew of other problems. Yeah. Um, so we just kind of want to touch on a few of those things. And we're also going to link an amazing blog that our founder, Angela Arlino wrote with a video kind of showing you guys how, how to find the source of the problem yeah. in your house. Kind of allergy proof your home. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about those. We won't get too deep into those, but we do have the blog. Um, obviously, uh, didn't share. There it goes. There we go. Obviously, food. Food, 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 food. Food, food. food, food is the number one. Um, kibble uh, is a huge, huge source of allergies. Um, uh, and and even the proteins that you, you're using, whether it's kibble or whether it's fresh and raw, mm -hmm. um, chicken is a huge allergen. Some dogs have bad reaction to beef. Mm -hmm. um, some dogs have better reaction to eggs. Um, you can always do a process of elimination when you are feeding dogs. Mm -hmm. um, start slowly taking things out and seeing what's causing that certain allergy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But this is the number. Uh, this is something that's getting into the system every day, creating inflammation. That's uh, for now acute, but as we feed them every day, we don't get these allergies under control, we don't get their food under control. It's gonna 
create mm-hmm. this chronic inflammation, which is then going to lead to things like cancer. Right. Um, so food is number one. We always love Answers Pet Food. Um, they are incredible. Their resources are amazing. Their team is amazing. So if you're having allergy problems and you think it's related to food, hit them up. They are the experts in that field and mm-hmm. will kind of um, help you find the source of the problem. Yeah. Number one. Definitely. Um, things around the house, you guys. Febreze. Uh, yeah. Candles. Fragrances. Things that are heavily yes. fragranced. The detergents you guys are using to clean your sheets and um, their sheets and their clothes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, all of these chemical things that we're putting around the house. Um, if you're going to use candles, use soy candles, you know, mm-hmm. um, look for the all natural products around your grocery store. That's going to help a lot. Um, yeah. All these chemicals, pine sole, geez, pine sole is mm-hmm. a big problem. Yeah. Um, so really look at what you're lo- using around the house for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, your yard. Yeah. Is a huge. Right. Huge, Especially if your animals one. are prone to eating the grass, they, they like to go out and get dirty. You know, it, they are not only ingesting it, it's getting all over their fur topically and onto their skin. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these things, these chemicals, they bioaccumulate. So they'll store themselves in, in, in the fat of your animals and start to just accumulate mm-hmm. over time. And it can get worse and worse and worse yep. until suddenly you, you have something that is uncontrollable and that's gotten way out of control before you know it. Yep. Um, and then, of course, uh, a lot of these prescription things that we're given um, cause a lot of allergy problems and a lot of other problems as well. Mm-hmm. So um, flea and tick and heartworm and stuff like that. Um, there's always a time and a place for certain things. Um, there's also a lot of times natural alternatives. Um, so uh, take a look at that blog that we're going to post here. There's going to be some natural alternatives for everything, household products, uh, flea and tick, heartworm, um, candles. I mean, we have everything that's going to be all natural and hopefully help you find the source of the problem. Yeah. Uh, did we put the post? Yes, mm-hmm. we did. Yeah. Um, how are we doing? Good. Questions? Also, comments? we're doing a giveaway today, right? Yes. 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 So yes. we're going to do a giveaway today. Um, so if you want to post that link down there, we are going to be uh, choosing a winner to help you out with your allergies today. So respond to the link and enter to win, 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 win. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cool. I want to talk a little bit about glorious CBD and how it helps. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing that we're going to keep kind of introducing as we, you know, every week that we talk about is the endocannabinoid system. So this is the, the way that our body is able to interact with the things that you find in, in a hemp extract like CBD. This is the body's innate system um, that CBD interacts with. It's referred to as the master regulatory system for all the body's major organs and functions. And basically its primary function is to encourage a state of homeostasis, which means balance. So when systems are overactive and they're doing too much, it brings them back down. When systems are underactive and they're not doing enough, it brings them kind of back up, it upregulates them. And this directly applies to our body's immune system and how the immune system is responding to different perceived and real threats in the body. Um, so, you know, this by this diagram, you can kind of see there are receptors all throughout our dog's bodies for cannabinoids like CBD with especially high um, numbers of CB2 receptors in the gut, in the skin, um, in the central and peripheral nervous systems, which are areas that have a high density of cells that are involved in immune response. Um, So that's kind of how it can be so effective at moderating our pets' inflammatory responses and immunity function. Yeah. Quick note, uh, also I forgot to mention in before is that sometimes you can be using all the right products and feeding all the right foods and sometimes it's just genetic. Yeah. So don't drive yourself crazy. Yeah. Uh, Frenchies are going to be, yeah. probably have a, a high chance of being genetically disposed. I mean, to that's why things. we have Frenchies yeah. as our, our label. <laughs> they they get a whole bunch of issues. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to say, cause I, I feel like pet parents back home are being like, but I'm doing all this. Yes, yeah, 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 <laughs> right. And it's totally different. Like we always say, it's different for every dog. Yeah. You know, there's there are so many different um, cases and different genetic makeups. Um, so one size really does not fit all totally. in this. Susan asks, do you recommend allergy testing? And if so, what test? Um, um, yeah, there is a great, Sam, if you know, if not, I'll find it for you. There is a great allergy test that you can do, um, out there that I will 
find out for is you it guys. Glacier Peak one? Oh no, but that is that is what we Glacier do. Peak has a does a biofeedback test that tests for like a hundred and something different allergens. Yeah. Um that one's really good. Um I think there are there are a bunch of vets. Like when we did the Healing Naturally tour last year, Dr. Neil Weiner, who's a really great holistic vet in Northern California, he before he takes in any clients, he has them do that biofeedback oh, that's test awesome. as like a, a baseline because he sees so many animals that have allergies that he he was talking about like that is um, the the thing that they look for. Amy says NutriScan. I don't know NutriScan. I do don't you? know it either. No, I know that I have something. Um, and we just posted the Glacier Peak test. Um, Susan, I will find the other one that I'm thinking of and send it to you for sure. Yeah, um, but those are really easy to do. You you do them at home, you send them off, um, and that can give you a really good insight into what your animal sensitivities are. Totally. Uh, so you can better avoid those things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So CBD. CBD. So CBD. CBD. Um, so yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about the endocannabinoid system and Carter mentioned how there's receptors everywhere, um, including all over the immune system. Um, and so when C when when uh, the body detects these allergens, um, it releases a whole bunch of enzymes, including histamines, mm -hmm. which is why it's what we see in antihistamines, antihistamines. All, the, all the time. Yep. Um, and that's what's causing all the symptoms. It's our body's natural way of protecting, protect, yeah. thinking it's protecting us from these things. Yep. So inflammation and mm -hmm. redness, pruritus, which is that sensation of itchiness, mm -hmm. scratching, biting, you know, the swollenness and the pause, eyes, yeah, sleepy yeah. eyes, difficulty breathing. Yeah. All that um, is caused by these enzymes and caused by inflammation. Um, and so the beauty is that CBD, when it interacts with this endocannabinoid system, it basically tells the immune system, like, chill out, we're good. Mm -hmm. And it helps modulate it. So instead of just like antihistamines, what they do is block these receptors. Um, it works with the body to produce the right amount needed to right. keep us comfortable. Yes. Um, and that's the biggest difference. And we'll touch about Apoquil in a little bit, but that's mm -hmm. the biggest, biggest difference of using CBD um, to help against allergies as opposed to pharmaceuticals is right. working with the body, not stopping certain important parts of our system yeah. to help decrease symptoms. Right. Instead right. of turning a switch and turning something off, CBD and the other ca uh, cannabinoids found in a full spectrum extract, they are increasing communication between the body's various systems. So increasing communication between the central nervous system and the immune system and the gut and the skin. Can, making more connections between those places so that the messages of, is this a real threat? Is this something we need to overreact to? Can get to the right places and it can make a more balanced response, something that's more proportionate to the actual threat at hand, which in the case of many of these things is actually not a huge deal. Yeah, exactly. Um, another way that it can really help is by improving gut health. Um, and as we know, uh, over 70% of the cells that are responsible for the immune system are found within the gastrointestinal tract. The, the gut is a central part for our pet's immune health. And so one of the ways that we can help that and help the immune system is by boosting their gut health. And, and one thing that we know about CBD and a full spectrum hemp extract is it's great for their gut. It increases blood flow to the gut. It reduces inflammation throughout the, the blood cell. It moderates the release of different enzymes and, and, and um, things that help break down their food. Um, so it can just really give gut health a boost along with other things, like we said, like food, mm -hmm. like, you know, different pro and prebiotics there. As always, it's many different things, but CBD can help a lot with gut health. Yeah. Another thing CBD is going to help is the sensation, help the actual sensation, whether it's pain or itching and scratching, all that it uh, reacts to the central nervous system. So, uh, excuse me, interacts with the central nervous system so that they literally decrease the sensation yeah. of pain and itchiness. On and, a neurological level, it changes the way that they perceive yeah. pain. So while we're actually working on the root of the problem, we're also helping those nasty symptoms. Yeah. Uh, Nancy says that uh, their boy is, there's their Kata, Kataboo? 
Kitabu? It's OCD. Kitapu, like, a, like oh, an Akita? Yes, 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 maybe. I don't know. It says that. OCD scratching and gumming, 14 year old, almost, oh. uh, t almost teeth gone. Uh -oh. Have you tried TBD, Nancy? Um, have you, what have you tried as far as uh, helping with these symptoms? Mm -hmm. um, Helen Berg says, what is the easiest way to get to TBD on their gums? My labs oh. have moist mouths uh, that the CBD sort of drips right out. Hmm. Um, well, if it's just kind of dripping out, like maybe if you can get it and up the, under the gum, like. And uh, what I do for mine is just as far back as possible. So even yeah. if it is dripping down, at least it's dripping down. Yeah. On the inside and towards the back. Yeah. I mean, it's a dog. Inevitably, we say it's going to, we want to get it on their gums. They're going to swallow some yes. of it. So just the more that you can bring in contact with the gums, with that that area, so that it can be absorbed directly into the bloodstream, the better. If it goes through the digestive tract, it's still gonna be processed. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna be, you're, you're just gonna get less out of it. And it's gonna take longer for it to get there as yeah. well. But you know, as always, when we recommend dosing this stuff, it's, it's trial and error and it is case by case. It's event by event also. Mm -hmm. So if you see they're not getting the same amount of relief, use a little more. Um, it, it, it really is just kind of about assessing it in the moment and and adjusting based on what you see exactly um and, and helen said she tried that you know helen if, if mm. that's not working sometimes the option is put it on the food or put it on a treat it's not as effective and it's going to take long you have to use more to get there but you know just like a lot of cat parents it's the only option they have right. so right. Yeah. see what works for your animal and and do the very best you can in that situation i know it's frustrating i wish it was as easy as just putting in water or something but Right. Fortunately, not yeah. yet. There's a way though, but it, you know, you can have, you can still have great effect without, um, without putting it on the gums regularly. Totally. Um, um, yeah. And the, the last way <clears throat> CBD is going to help a lot, um, is with any skin issues going on, those hot spots and mm -hmm. redness and itchiness. Um, whether you're using it as a tincture, so we're getting it through the bloodstream to help all over or using a salve, which we'll talk about a little bit more for those, um, what am I trying to say, uh, targeted areas. Um, so dogs have um, more receptors for cannabis than even we do on their skin. So it soaks in very fast. Um, yeah. We have some amazing before and after photos. Um, so all those itchy skin problems that you're getting, all the redness, all the hot spots can be really, really helped out as well. With yeah. And oftentimes the skin is the place where the allergy sim symptoms show up first. You know, so you can have an animal that's really suffering and you don't even know it, you know, their their internal life can be really messed up, but it can show up, it'll show up on the skin. And that's kind of how you know that it's sort of gotten out of control. And when most pet parents notice that there's a problem. Um, so, you know, part of why we always recommend working preventatively rather than afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, Susan says, mm -hmm. uh, we believe my newest rescue has a suspected food allergy because of a gunky ear which is a huge symptom mm. so is one novel protein for three months but she is scratching horribly the last couple of weeks i believe seasonal allergies are kicking in i've been dosing her as directed with ease no response yet after a couple of weeks any suggestions mm. my first response is to up the dosage until we find the source of the problem yeah keep doing everything you're doing to find that source of the problem keep switching <laughs> proteins look around your house see what you're using if it's environmental issues and that's what it is so mm -hmm. be it up the dosage um, sometimes in the beginning, you have to use more, especially if it is environmental and we're in that season, mm -hmm. you might have to use more during this season to help reduce these symptoms than you will in an off season. Right. Um, play with the dosage, play with, um, when you're giving it to them, um, try to give it to them instead of maybe if you're just doing one dose a day, split it up throughout the day. So it's constantly in their system, just keep playing around yeah. um it's just it's sometimes just a good amount of trial and error and also remember that this is not it's not it's not just like a an a to b kind of journey mm -hmm. this is this is a it's not a linear kind of thing we're working on overall health so in a couple weeks you can't really expect yes. their gut health to turn around completely you're working on so many things there are many variables at play here and that's kind of the difference between a single target Western pharmaceutical way of coming at this and something that is more holistic. You really have to kind of do a, an overhaul of the immune system in the gut in order to get over something like this. So really, cons you know, you you have to be coming at it from 
from, you know, from a CBD therapy, from dietary therapy, um, rotating your proteins, making sure that their, their gut flora is in a, in a good place. So, you know, it really is, CBD is something that over time is going to build up gut resilience and health. Um, to be consistent. Yeah. And, yeah. And just play around. Yeah. But he's absolutely right when he's saying sometimes it takes a lot, it not most of the time it's going to take longer, but the overall long-term effects are worth what the wait. Yeah. And you know, like some pet parents get immediate relief from some of the, because there are certain properties to do with CBD with allergies that are fast acting yeah. that the reducing inflammation, the, the sensation of pain, those things happen really quickly. But then when you think about the way that it's able to balance the gut and balance the other systems and increase communication, those are things that are gonna be more long-term that are gonna create your pet's resilience over a, a greater period of time. 100%. So be patient for those results if your pet isn't one of those that's gonna have a quick turnaround um, with those initial responses. Yeah. And Nancy, uh, I, I hope you listened to all that. She said, a uh, shot lasted about a week, medicated bats weekly, allergy chews, nothing is working. I did order CBD yesterday. Awesome, but I hope you listened to everything we just said. Give it time, be consistent, change the dose. It might work right away. It might take some time. Yeah. Um, just be persistent and look at what you're feeding them and around the house yeah. and, um, and eventually we'll get there yeah. for sure. Uh, Chantilly Garcia says, I've tried it on my parrots. Works well for them for the stress and anxiety. <laughs> yes. Birds have an endocannabinoid yeah. system too. Yeah, we use it on all the birds mm -hmm. on the rescue farm. Chickens. The chickens get it. Oh yeah. The geese awesome. get it. I'm oh that yeah. One. That's great. Chantilly, if you have any success stories or any videos or anything, please send them our way. We'll post an email that you can send it to um, and I'll hook you up with some discounts too. So those before and afters, those success stories, if you haven't left reviews, they help so much. They do, they please do, they do, they do. Please. They do. Um, let's <coughs> see, Nancy says, also order the salve, uh, has anomalies around her butt area. Mm. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, take some before and after photos for sure. <laughs> It'll help. Yeah. Angel says, we use animal biome FMT capsules, and with a good protocol, we see major improvements in serious allergy symptoms like IBD in about three months. Love fecal transplants, yes. Yeah. And the freeze-dried capsules, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Totally. Cool. Angie's Farm and Four Dogs says, can you give CBD to bearded dragons? Yes, you can. Absolutely, yes. yeah. You can. There's not a whole lot of clinical research into bearded dragons and their sensitivity. But there um, is some. Is there? I think so. Is there reptile I, I elements? Was, yes, because that um, the one I watched with Dr. Sulak, yeah. um, they mentioned some. I'll see if I can find this research, but they have oh done it on reptiles. That's cool. We'll also have an endocannabinoid system. Yep. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, Susan says, will the sab work on the growth warts that they get with age? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, we yep. we did a whole talk on um, cancer and neoplastic growths um, that you can watch. It's on our YouTube page. It's also on the CBD Dog Health. Um, that's all about both cancerous, both benign and um, uh, what am I talking about? Benign and cancerous. Cancerous? No, I don't know the other word. The opposite of benign is <laughs> something. Something. <God>. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Malignant. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. It's like I don't know. Uh, um, cool. I love all the questions. Keep yeah, them coming. Good we're questions. just gonna we're just gonna keep talking. Yeah. Good questions. Um, want to talk a little bit about Apoquil? Yeah. Apoquil. We should most... talk about Apoquil because we, we, we got to Allergies and Apoquil don't get discussed without a veterinarian prescribing Apoquil. And mm, not all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing, you guys. There is a time and a place for Apoquil. Mm -hmm. Um. It it really does get those symptoms down fast. And if there's a animal that is suffering and we need to get those symptoms to go away like this, mm -hmm. awesome. Which yeah. should not be, is something to be used long-term. Right, um, yeah. It, it does not work with our, the, our body or our immune system works against it. Yeah. It does not fix the problem of allergies. It puts a Band-Aid over it and stops the symptoms, yeah. but not without a cost. Right, so the way that Apoquil works is it turns off this specific um, receptor called the Janus kinase receptor. I won't get too much into that, but basically what this thing is responsible for is a number of functions in the immune system that are really important, um, like destroying and preventing tumor growth, 
forming red and white blood cells, controlling inflammation, which is how it is able to stop allergy symptoms. It signals new cell growth and ensures the proper function of B and T cells, immune cells. So all those functions are included in this receptor that Apoquil just turns the switch off on in order to solely suppress inflammation. So by doing that, you've opened your pet up to so many different immuno immunological dysfunctions just in order to get them from stop experiencing the symptoms of heuritis. You haven't found the thing that's stopping that. You've only turned off the response to it. Um, so as soon as you come off Vapoquil, it comes roaring back mm -hmm. and oftentimes worse. And what do you think happens when you suppress the immune system for how weeks, months, yeah. years yeah. sometimes? Um, I mean, look at the studies, all the studies that they have on Epicor, short-term studies right. showing how safe it is. But if you look further into it, you'll see what it can do and the the, um, the amount of dogs they've had to put down and the tumors that have come, the cancer that's come. Um, a CBD, on the other hand, isn't suppressing the immune system. It's not blocking these receptors that have a job to do. It's working with it and creating balance. Um, and Marie... She said, did you get her? I found her yeah, question. Yeah, you found it? Yeah, she says, what about putting it on your finger like we do when we put it on the ears? Could we do that to put it on the gums? That would work, yeah. yeah. So if you were to put the oil on your finger and rub it directly on their gums, that is another way. Absolutely. Back to administration. Totally. Sorry, Marie, um, oh, I didn't mean to skip sorry, your question. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to skip you. <laughs> but thanks for calling us out. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so Apoquil, you know, there are certain cases where animals are really suffering, where yeah. an allergy attack is totally out of control and you need to just like stop the reverberation, stop it immediately. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what it was designed for. And then it kind of, it sort of got out of control and veterinarians started prescribing it long-term as a maintenance drug. And that's where things have really gotten out of control and where you see animals with all uh, cancers and tumor tumor growth with dogs using Apoquil long-term is kind of one of the biggest side effects that I've seen um, or that in the research that I've found on here. On yeah, it. you know, we're, we're, we're really trying to promote the, uh, how important it is to, of when to use Eastern and Western. There's, there's a place for both. We, yeah. uh, you know, I, I keep saying this, that we never are coming from a place of, that's bad, you know, Apoquil is terrible. It's the way you use it, yep. right? Um, it's certain situations need something that's going to solve a problem. I, when it when it comes to uh, quality of life and suffering in that moment, we just want to nip that in the butt. So I understand doing something like Apoquil. Yeah. Um, but a longevity solution, it's just, it's not. It's it. not a quick fix. No. You know, people want a quick fix, and that's just not. It's not a quick how fix. health works. Yeah, as we know? solved the first time, we've been using it for about. a few weeks, and it's and we haven't gotten there yet. But I really promise that the long term effects are are worth the wait. It's gonna let your dog live longer and happier and healthier, and mm. it's just worth it. We got some questions. Yeah, Diane asks. I used Remedy Sav on a sebaceous cyst for about a month and it went away, but a few weeks later, it came back. Will it eventually go away and not come back, or will I, uh, will I have to keep putting it on forever? You know, it's, uh, I would hope not. Um, you know, me in many cases. Many, I've never seen come back unless we didn't get it all down, the way, all the way down, yeah. because yeah. then those cells just start to re recreate, rec right. recreate. What am I saying? Reproduce. Uh, reproduce. Thank yeah. you. Um, so maybe if you when you get it back down, just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. If it's sebaceous, a, there may it may still be under there, just beyond your detection on a physical whale, yeah. physical scale. Way I, I mix way and scale and <laughs> on a physical whale. Um, uh, Angie says, does an animal need to have an issue in order to give CBD? Can you give a healthy animal CBD just to give? Absolutely. What a great question. Yes. Preventative Absolutely. medicine. I'm Absolutely. a pretty healthy animal and I take it every day. Every single day. It's, listen, there's, there's so many degenerative issues that are going to come no matter what. Even if you're fed the best food in the world and given CBD every single day, inflammation mm -hmm. in the joints is going to happen. Arthritis is going to happen to all of us eventually. Yeah. What we can do is slow it down. Down. Right. We can also, you know, with all these toxins in the world that are causing neurological issues, we can protect the brain because we know it's neuroprotectant. Um, there's so much that this 
plant can do because of our endocannabinoid system. So using it preventatively is going to help make sure that you later don't have to give it. Yeah. And and a lot of people, you know, I've talked to many people when I talk to them about my my using CBD and they're like, well, I just don't want to like, I don't want to be dependent on drugs. And I think we just have to, we have to adjust our thinking about this and think of it more as kind of like a food almost because it is not, it, it's not changing the body's functions. It's not doing like a direct, like I said, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not A to B. It's not, it's not like it's telling the body to do this. It's giving the body the tools to do its natural job, yeah. to do its natural balancing act. It just gives the body those pieces that unlock that function. Um, so it is a very moderate and, and gentle way of encouraging um, proper function in the body. Yeah, 100%. Which is also why that sometimes it, it doesn't go as fast as, as people expect it to. Yeah. You know? We're, we're so used to quick fixes. We are, yeah. Uh, Susan says, I'm going to need stock in your company for all the products I'm ordering. <laughs> Susan, we appreciate the support, but we're happy it's working. Yeah. <laughs> and keeping your babies comfortable. Uh, Tracy says, have you done any studies combining CBD with homeopathic remedies for allergies? Uh, Apis, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Or combining with mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Curious if the result in a stronger, faster effect. Um, we love mushrooms. <laughs> um, we they're both adaptogens, so mushrooms and cannabis are going to uh, help the part of the body that needs it the most um, synergistically. Um, there is research showing that, for example, turmeric and frankincense work amazing separate, but work even better together. Right, um, and they work very similarly to what cannabis does. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that combining all these um, uh, natural products that just help our immune system are going to work even better. Yeah. Um, our goal is to have so much research and then so much products containing all these other amazing natural products that work together. Um, you know, cannabis is new, well, new to research. Um, and as we learn more and figuring out exactly which essential oil and which terpene and which mushroom and yes. you know which yeah. cannabinoid and which Being specific yes about it. we're going to be able to create the most beautiful blends to help yeah. very specific ailments that is the future of cannabis but we do know they work together yeah that is you know that and that's why our products are designed with other synergistic herbal medicines included in them you know that's why we have frankincense and turmeric in our ease tincture mm -hmm. because they share compounds like terpenes terpenes like beta caryophylline and myrcene that are known for the, their other anti-inflammatory properties cannabis shares with those other plants and when we're talking about holistic medicine like this especially with cannabis based therapies it is already many many different compounds working in synergy so we're just kind of expanding that and inferring that if it's working for cannabis and it, it that it already includes compounds that are shared with those other elements that you know they are already made to work together um yet we don't have the research but that's kind of that's how we got to this point with cannabis is so many reports of it working and it working and finally money being available to start doing that research. So yeah, we're getting more and more research. And all, wherever you guys are, when there is, uh, when you guys can vote um, to help uh, cannabis recreationally or medically, um, we need, we need cannabis to get off the schedule one yeah. uh, control list, schedule one control list. They're saying that it has no medicinal value um, and it's highly addictive. False and false. Yeah. And until we get that off of schedule one, we cannot conduct the proper research. Right. Um, and I have a good feeling that some pharmaceuticals are very involved in keeping it that way. Absolutely. So your vote matters. And when you can use your vote and your voice, please do so. Absolutely. So that we can do this kind of research. Yep. 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 Uh, Anne Marie says, My pup had calcium deposits on her eyeball and cbd got rid of it yay without even trying was giving it for seizures i love this company i'm posting that one. Oh, oh it's Anne marie Anne marie Anne marie is the best the best thank you Anne marie you the, all the support you give us is yes is, slippery elm is amazing yeah. susan um kathy asks why do we have frankincense in the cbd for pain and don't we have an image we do don't have we have an image? image we were just about to talk about I that know. that's great timing uh, good question right <laughs> on cue kathy <laughs> 
So, you know, one of the ways that CBD is able to help pain is by reducing inflammation. So for, for instance, in the case of joint pain, when you have two joints rubbing together and the, the tissue in between them is inflamed, it creates pressure between them and those bones start grinding against that tissue, which causes that pain. Frankincense as well is highly anti-inflammatory highly anti-inflammatory. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. It's um, also, uh, what is it? What are, what are you trying to say? The one where it takes out toxins. <laughs> God, why oh. am I brain dead? Uh, antioxidant. Antioxidant, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It also has high antioxidant properties, which those free radicals can bounce around in the body and damage tissue and cause more inflammation. Um, so. Yeah, inflammation, 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 the root mm -hmm. cause of almost every yeah. single problem. Many, many diseases. Um, and even actually if, uh, the phone calls we get too, but if you look through the reviews, is, reviews, is, reviews, is, the reviews is, if you look through the reviews is of ease, the reviews <laughs> on ease, um, there's a lot of reviews um, of people saying, I used Heal First, which is much more potent in CBD um, with no essential oils, with some success on pain and inflammation, but they were able to use less milligrams of CBD mm -hmm. with the frankincense and turmeric to get an even better result. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have some research showing that, you know, it all works together and there is just anecdotal evidence everywhere about how much it helps with inflammation. Yeah, and turmeric as well. Uh, turmeric is a really powerful herb that's very antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. And when these two are brought together, there's research that shows that they're even more effective. So again, playing into that, that synergistic uh, relationship between these herbal medicines. Yeah. Um, so Susan says, why is Heal so much smaller a bottle than Ease? It's smaller, but it's much more potent. So mm -hmm. you you can you get to use less oil to get the CBD in there. Um, you know, with the other essential oils, so it's just easier to have a little bit more carrier oil mm -hmm. in the two ounce bottles. But so that we can include those other essential oils as well as the CBD. Exactly. But um, it's it's Heal is actually four times as potent and CBD as calm and ease are so mm -hmm. um, much stronger. Yeah, much stronger. More CBD per milliliter of oil. Exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. So we talked about Apicoil. Um, again, there is a time and a place, you guys. Um, but for long term effects, a long term health, please don't keep your dogs um, on Apicoil. Um, I know it's I know it's a quick fix, but yeah. it's not worth it. Not worth it. Definitely not worth it. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, that's that's it about like how CBD works, right? Yeah, we yeah. have two amazing products um, to help with CBD. Um, help with CBD. Allergies. We it it we it is Friday. Um, <laughs> with allergies, um, our ease tincture, which we've been talking <laughs> about, which is uh, 550 milligrams of full spectrum CBD with turmeric and frankincense. Um, I mean, the reviews are there. You can read them. We see it every single day. Um, the Soothe Sav is there. Um, it's uh, got uh, 150 milligrams of full spectrum CBD. It's ginger and honey and coconut oil. And that's for topical targeted areas. Um, using a tincture and a salve together is really amazing. So if, we, if they're breaking out everywhere and you're using the Soothe, it's going to help, of course. But if you use the tincture as well, we're treating the root of the problem to help make sure it doesn't come back and also get those symptoms to go away a little bit faster. Yeah, definitely. Um, so those are two great ones. Um, and then uh, food, answers pet food. Yeah, food. One of the things that I've, that people always say really helped. And one thing that I recommend is the raw fermented goat's milk or, uh, or yeah. kefir. For dogs that are highly prone to allergies, the the probiotics in that are just really great for developing proper gut health and, and a really robust gut biome. So uh, raw fermented goat's milk that Answers produces is really great. Yep. yep. Um, good pre and probiotics. Somebody recommended Slippery Elm on here. Yep. Awesome. That's really awesome. Um, Anti-inflammatory foods. So um, yeah, if, you, if, you, if, if you're feeding your dog a lot of chicken, it's a good chance. It's possible that chicken is chicken is highly <laughs> beef. inflammatory. Chicken beef, yeah. yeah. Um, just you know, let's find the root of the problem first. If we can't find it, or it's genetics or environmental. Um, there is an all natural way to help those symptoms and to help quality of life and longevity. Um, yeah, 
and there's a lot of research to prove it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And allergies long term are really bad for our pets. Yeah, you know it, it. It sucks to see them in it in the short term, but also chronic low grade inflammation is one of the primary causes for more serious diseases down the line. Yes. So even if even if you're like, oh well, he's just kind of an itchy dog, like that that you know it may not be so bad now, but to nip that in the bud so that you can prevent something more serious down the road is really you're doing yourself a service you're saving yourself money down the line mm-hmm. and you're, you're you're saving your pet a lot of trauma um so that they don't have to go through surgeries through chemotherapies through different things down the road yeah treat totally. preventatively uh carmen just says what about cytopoint it was suggested i know nothing about cytopoint uh cytopoint injections um I mean, I honestly, I'm not a veterinarian, so I don't really want to. I don't really want to kind of take a stance on Cytopoint. I haven't done that much research into it. Um, but is that like is Adequan a Cytopoint injection? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm not qualified to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and so I don't. Wanna, I don't want to mislead you and, and claim <laughs> that I know something that I don't. My specialty is cannabis. Yeah. That being said, if you guys do need a little uh, more help, um, our chief veterinarian, uh, Dr. Zach Pilasoff, along with our founder and cannabis expert, Angela Ardolino, do consultations together. Um, So they will work with you one-on-one, talk about anything that's going on, get all your vet paperwork, all the lab works lab work what am I? it's not so tiny. i know man I and know. uh they're going to Almost uh, i know and they're gonna uh come up with a protocol an all natural protocol and uh for you and, and help direct you with cannabis and other holistic methods to help anything allergies cancer seizures anything um they're two incredible experts so if you mm-hmm. want a consultation we just um put the link down there yeah so cytopoint is similar to apoquil um, yep. I, I still, I I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll learn a little bit about it. Yeah. I'll go and do a little bit more research on it. Totally. Um, if it's similar like Apoquil, my instant thought is maybe for a quick time, quick one time fix right. situation, but, um, not something to be continually doing. Yeah. But. Whether, whether you're using Apoquil now or Cytopoint now, that doesn't mean that you can use that in place of trying to find the root of the symptom and creating a long-term strategy for making it not come back. It is not a solution. It is something to hold it off while yeah. you figure it out. Yeah. That would be my philosophy yeah. and how I would do it with my animals. Yeah. Yes, it's hard. Not, you know, some dogs are going are gonna to be quick and some are going to take time and we understand the frustration. Yeah. I have crazy allergies myself. Yeah. But have yeah. you seen me have an allergy attack the last, no, this he, last he year? used to have awful ar- allergy attacks. It was uh, gross. Like yeah. we couldn't take them outside. It was, no, it was really awful. We would have but, events and stuff and I'd be like, you're going to stay home mm-hmm. today, But I buddy. eat I eat less gluten. I eat less dairy because I figured out that was one for me. I take CBD every single day. I drink a lot of water. And I've it took me years to figure out how to manage it in a natural way but yeah. now i'm not taking all these chemical medications and i don't have these flare-ups and you know it sometimes takes time be consistent um and yeah. we're always here to help always here to help always here to help mm-hmm. susan i researched it and there are bad side effects with it we're definitely going to learn more about yeah it we got to sure. we'll look into and it. we'll talk to dr zach for sure cool all right guys thanks so much for joining us um we're going to be back here next week um, we're going to be talking all about dosing and administering, administering, oh, cool. yep. um, the science, uh, the research of why one way is better than the other. We have a fun um, new video coming a fun out. New video coming out. With Dr. Um, Zach, that'll yeah. be out next week. So you know, it's one. It's probably the biggest question we get every yeah. day. How much do I give, and how do I give it? Right. Um, so we just want to break all the myths and give you all the research and help you find the best way to use your CBD products. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and make sure that you, if you didn't submit already to that yes. link, uh, that we are having a giveaway. We're yeah, going to give yeah, some yeah, stuff yeah, away yeah, today. Yeah. So And please share this Share video. this. Tell people to come here. If they yeah. have questions that need, they don't know about CBD, send them to us. We love to answer questions. You can go on our chat on the website. You can give us a call. Email you can us. email us. Send you can us come to these Instagram, live Facebook. things. And we'll answer your questions here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any anything you guys could do to help share and promote us, leave reviews if you're using the products, let your friends know. Um, whatever you can do, you know, um, it, it really, really helps us out to help so we can help animals all over the world heal naturally. Yeah. Woo! Woohoo!
Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Bye, everybody. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. You got to close that one, too. Oh, this one. This yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.